All right, guys, welcome back to another video. It's your man, Jay Will. Had to lock that focus. So this is a comparison, a video comparison from the uh, HTCU Ultra and the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. Now, everybody feels like, well, I shouldn't say everybody. A lot of people feel like this is the best phone of 2017. I totally disagree with that. And some people feel like this phone is the biggest flop in 2017. And I totally disagree with that. So we're gonna compare these two devices and I'll tell you how I feel about each one of them. This, uh, we're gonna do the basics here. Screen, speaker quality, you know the drill. We're gonna go ahead and put these head to head because that is what people do with their devices. In most cases, they're taking pictures for social media and they're watching video content. And that is what it is. So here on the S8 Plus, this phone, does in fact have one of the most beautiful displays when watching content. It has a 6.2 inch Quad HD display. That's saying a lot. Samsung really put in some work and time and effort into this design of this phone and display. And I, I'm gonna tell you, it's fantastic. It's a fantastic display, no getting around it. When watching content, you get all of that screen. I mean, all of it. 6.2 inches of goodness. Uh, and, and it's just a fantastic, beautiful, vibrant, punchy display. Now, on the flip side of that, the U Ultra doesn't have a 6.2 inch display. It has a 5.7 inch quad HD display. Does that mean it's bad? Nope. A lot of advantages come to this side because it's a older resolution, a 16 by nine. And this has this newer resolution where a lot of people are going or companies are going to start going to. This one has an even awkward, more awkward one, which is 18 by 5, 18.5 by 9, when the G6 has 18 by 9. So traditional display over here, when I am watching content, it's just as vibrant, just as punchy as this display right here. Now, I do have different wallpapers up here, and I'm gonna load up the same pictures on both of these displays, and you can decide for yourself which one you think is more punchy, and I'll chime in on my opinion too. So I've got some HD pictures here, loaded up in my Google Drive. Now remember, this is a Super AMOLED display, and this is a, I think this is the LCD 5, I believe it is. Let me verify, let me verify, because I, I don't have to memorize all, this, memorize all this stuff, I can just use my cheat sheet. Uh, LCD 5, yes. So you can see the difference here. These are both on auto brightness, by the way. So I'm gonna tap on a picture right here where the Samsung Galaxy S8 should just do very well with blacks. Uh, it's kind of picking up my thing there, but let's see here. All right, so you get the just. Maybe I'll put it right there. Well, no matter how I do it, the Samsung Galaxy S8, here we go. So you tell me, and I'll change the position here of each one to make sure, make it fair. You tell me which one you think looks more black and punchy. Uh, I can tilt if you want me to. You tell me. That's the first picture. Let's see, let's make sure I get these right. All right, let's see. Yeah, here's the next photo. Should be the same. You tell me how the blacks look on both of these phones. And you know, you tell me. Tell me how vibrant and vivid they look. Take a look at those. Samsung one is definitely brightening up the, the photo with that, that display there. Now on this one, I get a little more, it's brighter and I get a little bit more detail on that one. And on this photo and, and from where I sit, this is the, all the Samsung seem to be brightening up more than it should, I guess, but um, that's just what it is. These are the same photos coming from the same folder in my Google Drive. Let's see if I have any more? Yeah, I got one. You tell me what you think about these photos. Now, this is just the same photo. This, this, this infinity display is super bright. I don't have any kind of enhancements turned on for this display either, because you can do that. Um, I have it just set at whatever it came at. And I'll just do this last one right here. All right. So in my opinion, 
I think the HCCU Ultra looks better in a lot of those photos. That's just my opinion. Um, Samsung displays, this display for some reason is making that photo a lot brighter than it should in some of those photos. And then also when it came to the blacks in the photos, to me, this one looked better. Now I've already compared the Ultra next to the S8. No need to, no need to do that again. It's a little guy. And, but this is the bigger brother. So pretty much same phone, just bigger display, I know. But I actually do like the display on this phone. It's huge, it's nice. But in that situation, I think that the U Ultra displayed the blacks better. And then I also felt like it gave a more realistic photo. Even though those are the same photos that's coming out of my Google Drive, I have a folder set with HD photos uh, for samples. And I just feel like the HTC U Ultra did better. That's just my opinion though. But you see through the video, so you give your opinion as well. Um, and that's just what it is. So also let's, okay, so video footage, I'll, 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 I'll show you some video footage and some photos of the same thing. And, and we'll do that now and then we'll convene here in just a second and you tell me what you think. All right guys, here's a quick video sample from the S8 Plus. All right guys, here's a quick video sample the HTC you ultra all right guys here's a quick video sample on the front from the sa plus all right here's a quick video sample on the u ultra on the front All right, what did you think about that video footage, those photos? What do you think? So uh, I'm gonna give you my opinion. Um, the S8, a lot of people have had problems with focus hunting on the front uh, and the rear, I believe, on some. Um, but I personally don't really, some pe people tell me that it's there but I just, I guess because I'm not looking for it, I don't even notice it. But I did notice in one um, that it was a little, it was focused on it a little bit. Some some people did, did say that. So, but I just didn't notice it. Uh, but obviously, you know, this 8 megapixel camera is being trumped by this 16 megapixel front camera. And when I tell you audio is just fantastic on the U Ultra for, for recording video, I tell you no lies. I mean, you, you can just see for yourself, this has four microphones. So, you know, hey, this has two uh, from my understanding. So with the four microphones, the three audio recording is ridiculous. I mean, you're picking up sound from everywhere. There's a microphone right next to the front camera on the U Ultra. Yeah. So to me, the U Ultra definitely has the better cameras. Um, now, while it's not the rear camera, you know, to me, now that's the front camera. The front camera is totally U Ultra. The rear camera, uh, it's, kind of, it's really close. Um, I don't see any huge. Now, on the when I had the S8, I felt like the S8 edged it out. Well, when I did the comparison with the S8, I felt like it edged it out a little bit. But, you know, doing it again here with the S8 Plus, same cameras, and I guess it just depends on the setting and the video at that time. You know, like, I guess it depends. In a game, the winner of that day is the winner of that day. And today, I feel like the U Ultra performed better for cameras. You know, that's it. Now, keep in mind with this comparison, guys, I'm covering things that the average consumer is probably going to use the most. They're going to use the screen a lot and they're going to use the cameras a lot. So, you know, that's just what it is. So I've covered the screen. I've covered the camera. Now I want to cover uh, the sound quality. Uh, on, on these devices. Now, I don't really have to do a sound test, but I just wanted to make it be known. The U Ultra has a dual a dual uh, speaker setup. 
which boom sound. And then the Samsung has a uh, single bottom firing speaker. Now, even though that single bottom firing speaker is nowhere near as loud as these dual speakers, uh, I think even if this just had one speaker, it still would be louder than this phone because this phone is waterproof. It's a waterproof device. So they have to do something to try to get the best sound out of that. So that's kind of what you're looking at. That's kind of no comparison there. So I've given you the two things that I think people might use the most, which actually they do use the most. They look at video and they watch, they record videos and stuff like that and they take pictures. Let's get to the skinny of this. Uh, well, let's back up. Let's do some, let's talk about performance. Now, performance on these devices, um, I just haven't had a hiccup on my HTC Ultra, U Ultra at all. I feel like, now this is obviously, all of this is subjective, but my personal opinion, you, it's either, it's a love, hate, I like how it just flows off the screen right there. Hate curved screens, but I like how it just kind of curves off right there. See how it's kind of fading away? Uh, but subjective, but performance is not subjective. Um, some people like TouchWiz and they, don't, they ignore the performance that TouchWiz might bring. This phone needs six gigs of RAM, in my opinion, to perform like this phone. This phone has a Snapdragon 821, a tried and true processor. You can say whatever you want about it, saying that it's old technology and it's last year's tech, say that all you want to. But in reality, I haven't had a hiccup on this phone, not once. In turn, on this phone, I have. Uh, going into certain uh, areas of the phone, I got to do it. One in particular, uh, when you come in here, it takes a little bit of time to load. And then when it does load, there's that little bit of lag there. Why that is, I have no clue, but it's just the way the phone is optimized. And, and we're going to get to battery, guys. I didn't forget. When you come in here, uh, smooth sailing nothing i don't know what that's about on the samsung devices but that's just what it is so anyway um when it comes down to performance to me since ui performs better than TouchWiz. wait i got i gotta keep that joke going grace ui grace experience or whatever it's called samsung experience since ui performs better period it just performs better there's no getting around it that's my opinion, that's my experience. You know what, that's not my opinion, that's my experience with it. Since UI has not crashed on me ever. TouchWiz on the other end, has, I've experienced lag, and I shouldn't because this has the Snapdragon 835. They both have four gigs of RAM, they both have 64 gigs onboard storage, and they both perform very well in that aspect. Now, believe it or not, the Samsung, let me jump back to the camera for a second. Believe it or not, the Samsung actually has an advantage. 4K, 1080p, 60 frames per second, uh, 2K recording on the camera. I didn't cover that, my bad. You can only record those at 10 minutes. This one does not have 60 frames per second, and you can only record six minutes of 4K. I don't, don't understand that limitation, but hey, maybe it's the Snapdragon 821. No, it's not. I don't know what it is, but six minutes of recording on here, opposed to 10 minutes of recording in high quality video, the lame. I don't understand. I, I don't understand that. Now, fast forward back to where I was at. Performance, 835, 821. Both four gigs of RAM. Uh, both uh, have 64 gigs on board storage. Both have an SD card. That's an equal balance right there. Uh, to me, the 835 may look better on benchmarks, but performance-wise, with SenseUI coupled together, I don't see the big gains of the 835. Uh, now, as far as gains go, I did see uh, lots of improvement when, when doing VR and gaming on here. The device stays extremely cool to the touch, and maybe that's something about it. Now, these both have Android 7, so, you know, that's a equal wash, I guess, for that. Uh, but let's jump over to battery, and then I'm going to get out of here. Now, this wasn't a, like a full-blown comparison of all the knickknacks that each one of them has. No, this was just straight to the basics of what the phones will be used for. Uh, and I will I will kind of name out some things where the Samsung... Uh, Stick around to the end. The Samsung wins in some areas, uh, but battery life. Now, this phone comes shipped at a 1080p setting. Now, I keep my phone. Now, I did do a 1080p battery test, and um, I, you know, I, I tested it out, and I, I, I just barely got over six hours of screen on time, just barely. 
uh, and that was at the 1080p setting. Not going to test the 720p setting because I don't think I'll see any real difference in performance. Uh, but at the Quad HD setting, I'm only getting about five hours, maybe five hours of screen on time. This phone, you cannot change the display. If you could, it would be even better battery life than the S8 uh, Plus. Uh, some people are saying they're getting like nine hours of screen on time battery life. I'm like, wow. Now OnePlus, I did go a one day and three hours or one day and six hours with that four hours and 59 minutes of screen on time, whatever I got. This phone though, I can definitely get a full day and I can pass six hours of screen on time pretty much on every charge. So with no optimizations to the screen resolution, um, I still am getting better battery life on this phone, on the U Ultra. So, um, and battery life is, is definitely depending on the user. Don't, don't think that I'm saying that my battery life is what everyone's gonna get, but there are several reports that show that this phone has great battery. And there are several reports that show that this phone has great battery too. I just haven't experienced it yet. Uh, on, on the Quad HD setting. And that's what uh, Wi-Fi and LTE mixed, and now I'm doing the LTE tests. So I've done the Wi-Fi, that was a Wi-Fi, I did a Wi-Fi LTE mix. It still came out about the same, which is kind of weird. So now I'm doing the LTE test. Uh, so the the U Ultra uh, definitely has better battery life in my experience, uh, because I can't even adjust the, you know, the, the setting of the screen. So another thing I wanna cover before I get out of here is the build quality. Now, again, this is all subjective. Say what you will about it. This is a fantastic uh, piece of hardware, and this is a fantastic piece of hardware. Now, I do have a D-brand skin on mine, but I did that solely for grip. I have a clear carbon fiber skin on this one too. They both pretty much look the same, but I do that for grip. I don't really care what the phone looks like on the back. These both have slippery glass backs, but I will say this, the overall design of the phone, yeah, this has big a big chin, big forehead, you might say, but look at the build quality on this phone, the chassis of this phone, compared to, this phone looks like it's plastic all the way around when it's actually not. So, build quality, design, uh, it's a toss up, but I kind of favor this one, just a little bit. Uh, because if you if you think about it, look at the the metal. I can see the metal on here. It's not painted any other. Uh, it's not painted the same as this phone right here. This phone has a shiny gloss all the way around, and I'm not so much a fan of that. It's already bad that it's a shiny shiny phone on the back, but then to have it shiny on the edges too. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. Uh, but this phone right here. Now they're both they both have a black uh, back on them, a glass back. Uh, but this has a metal, and I've said it in multiple videos, I like the feel of the S7 better. I like the feel of the G6 better. Just that that metal, cold metal, uh, they should have stuck with that. They should have stuck with that. This cold metal is just the way it should have been done. That's just what I think. Um, let's move on from build quality. I can beat that horse up all day. Uh, overall guys, um, the S8 has what you might say has more features. It has an iris scanner, it's waterproof, um, but it has this awkwardly placed fingerprint reader on the back. And I'm a fan of rear, rear mounted fingerprint readers, but the HTC U11's uh, uh, fingerprint reader is fast. It's actually f faster than the uh, S8 Plus's fingerprint reader. And it's not because I'm fumbling around with it, it's just that it's a fast fingerprint reader, period. Uh, and it just happens to be on the front. But you've got waterproofing, iris scanner, uh, Bluetooth 5.0. Those are some things that you really should, should consider thinking about. Um, <clears throat> this one definitely has better audio. Um, it, it's, it's a toss up, uh, but I do feel like uh, the, the cameras on this phone shined way more than I thought it would. And, you know, the S8 Plus is great, uh, but I don't think that, you know, and, and also the price now, this phone debuted at 750, it's now five, under 600 bucks. This one is 
this is the unlocked version. So this one debuted at pay 824 for 825 for something like that for this one, uh, plus taxes. And this was 750 plus taxes. But this phone debuted at a price of still higher than this one. But you can find this phone now much lower than 600 and it's highly recommended by me. This phone right here isn't so much on sale. You'll have to catch this one on a promo or something. And this is the unlocked version. So you're definitely not going to catch this on any promos yet. Um, but the carrier variants, you might be able to get one, buy one, get one free or something like that. Uh, but you know, this one has probably a higher feature set just because of the iris scanner and waterproofing and things like that. But this one does have dual speakers. This has a secondary display, which I didn't even cover um, because you know, average consumer might just put apps up there or contacts. And I just have a logo and I have some, some uh, things up there like for meetings and stuff like that and music. And, but it is usable, it's a, it's a feature. Uh, so I did this comparison because it is June 5th and the U11 isn't here yet. Just to show you that some of the reviews that are coming out on the U11 saying it's getting beat out by the S8 and the S8 Plus and the S8 Plus is top dog and the best phone in the world. As far as I see it, don't believe the hype because if I feel this way about this phone with the S8 Plus, imagine how I'm going to feel about the U11. You take that for what it, what it is. The S8 Plus is a fantastic, it's my daily driver right now. It's a great phone. But I just get tired of hearing all the videos and seeing the videos where people saying it's the best on the market because it's not the best on the market from where I sit and I review and have probably every phone that those people have. And again, it's all subjective. It's all my experience, but how do I say it? I work for me. I'll leave it at that. It's your man, J. Will. Deuces. Thanks for those who stuck around to the end. Keyword is conversation. Leave that in your comment. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.